Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today, imagine it's 1989. The Berlin Wall has been torn down and David Hasselhoff is number one in Germany with Looking for Freedom. I had everything that money could buy But freedom, I had none I've been looking for freedom Well, that's quite enough of that, although that's quite some jacket he's got on. So this same year, Scion released the Scion 2 LZ. It has the same 0.9 MHz 6303 CPU and the standard model packs 32K of RAM, the same as the upper model of the XP. There is, however, a 64K model available. If you're new to the Scion 2, I would suggest you have a look at my XP review. I'll put a link here or here. And if you've got one and you're unsure how to use it, I'll put a link to using my organizer from 1986 here or here. So let's take a look at the Scion LZ. When side by side, the XP and the LZ look very similar, almost identical. They've got the same hard case with a past sticker on the bottom. If you slide it out, they've got the same keyboard. They've got two data pack slots battery compartment, same screw layout, and the adjuster for the contrast. In fact, the only thing that sets them apart is the little XP or LZ and the slightly bigger screen on the LZ. Turning them on, and straight away you can see the LZ has more rows and more characters per row. In fact, instead of 16 times two, it's got 20 times four character slots, which is a 150% increase over the XP. Of course, the trade-off is the characters are therefore much smaller. So when we first turn it on, we get a selection of languages. Other ROMs had other languages available. As soon as we're into the device, you can see straight away two of the big improvements. On the home screen, we've got the battery indicator so no more rushing around looking for a PP3 when it starts going flat and on the other side we can see the time and this saves us going to the clock constantly if we want to tell what time it is. Other than the increasing characters allowing more items on display the menu works in the same way so you can use the arrow keys to jump to something or you can simply press the first letter in the application and it will jump straight to that application. Up first on the menu we have find so find allows you to search through the data base that's currently in. You can either simply press execute to scroll through any entries or you can put in a few letters and it will search the current database for them. In order to search for things we first need to save something. So if we go to save we can now enter a new file. So from here you can simply start typing. To add another line simply use the arrow key to move down. From here, pressing mode will allow you to save it to the various disks available. A is the RAM, B is the first slot, and C is the second slot. So we're going to save it to A, hitting execute now will save it, and we jump back to the main menu. Now we can have a look back at it by simply going to find, either typing in something to search for, or simply pressing execute to scroll through all available records. Once it reaches the end of the data file, it tells you there's no more men entries. Pressing clear takes us back to the main menu. When inputting characters, if you press shift and caps you can then put in lowercase shift caps returns it back to uppercase and shift and number allows you to enter numbers or characters again execute will save it there's a few extra functions to the data file on here and we'll come to those in due course moving forwards we've got diary so the first thing you'll notice when we hit the diary is we've now got this initial page so we've got days of the week at the top the year in the top right and then the actual date under that there are then four blocks and these represent the different time of the day and are filled in once we enter appointments so let's move forward to next week and pop an appointment in I've gone for the third block, it'll put it at two in the afternoon, tells us the day is free, pressing enter brings up the edit and now we can put an entry in. Hitting enter will then allow you to select the time you want. It started at two o'clock because I went to the third of the four dashes. We then use the arrow keys to change the time. 
Let's just do an hour. And now we have the option to add an alarm. If you press no, it'll just save the item. If you press yes, it brings up this alarm menu and you can use the arrow keys to change when the alarm goes off up to 59 minutes before. Once that's done, hitting enter shows us the day. So we can see the first block at six is free. And then after the gym, three o'clock onwards is free. If you want to add a new entry, you can simply scroll up to one of the free blocks, press enter, put something else in, just the time accordingly, hit enter, and now it saves that. So now we can see we're free after the gym for a short period before we go to the pub. Pressing escape takes us back to the main view and you'll see it's filled in those blocks. If we want to edit them, we can simply select one of the blocks, find the one we want to edit by scrolling up and down and hit execute. At that point, you can edit it, save it, add an alarm or not, and that's that. From the main view, we've got a couple of options. If we press mode, it brings up this menu so we can find, and this allows you to find any entries. It simply puts in a couple of characters and it will go look for one that matches. Pressing again, we'll look through the rest of the diary, and if there's no more, it simply reaches the end. Again, from the main screen, we've got a go to. This allows you to select a date using the arrow keys and jump to that date. You can see then there's no blocks filled in and therefore we're free that day. Next up, we've got tidy. Simply use the arrows to select the date and everything before that date will be deleted, clearing space in the memory for other items. After that, we've got print. Should you be lucky enough to have a Scion printer, you can print print out a list of what's going on. Then we've got save, which allows you to save this file to one of the memory card slot. Restore, which allows you to restore your file from one of the two memory card slot. X restore allows you to restore a Scion 2 diary onto your Scion LZ. Setup allows you to do two things. It allows you to alter the times at which those little bars start at, and it allows you to select whether you want alarm prompts or not. Going into the diary itself, we've got a couple more options. If we go to an entry like so, pressing mode brings up this option. So we can now copy an item and then we can paste it in. This saves quite a lot of time if you've got reoccurring events such as work or trips to the gym. In addition, you can cut an item so that it disappears from where you've taken it. We've seen paste already. There's an alarm option, which allows you to set when the alarm will be the same as it does in the diary itself. We can once again address the tidy, the print, the save, restore, X restore, and set up. So there we have it, the new diary. So I'm sure you'll agree with me when I say that the new diary application is more revolution rather than evolution. The ability to specify length of tasks means no more conflicts. And in addition, the idea of using blocks to represent time in a quick view is gonna be adopted by every PDA maker out there. The calculator is unchanged. It still works to 12 decimal places, can do scientific functions, and has 10 separate memories you can use. The only real change is the increased display capabilities. Time now displays a city location as well as the time and date. In addition, if you press mode, we now have a stopwatch option. Pressing execute will start it, stop it, and pressing space will allow you to operate a lap timer. The lap timer scrolls up and there doesn't seem to be any way to see previous laps, so you can only see the last two entries. Still, it's a nice handy touch. We've also got a countdown timer. In here, you can set the time and date. Simply use the arrow keys to adjust the day, the month, the year, hour, minute, and whether or not you want 24 hour or 12 hour mode. In addition, there's a daylight saving option. So this will allow you to quickly swap between daylight saving and not. Moving on, we come to notes. Notes is a completely new application. It starts with this default, which is the notepad, and allows you to enter notes. Unlike the database file, it doesn't appear to have a limit. It certainly can do more than 16 lines and more than 255 characters. If there is a limit, feel free to let me know in the comments below. So in Notepad, there's a couple of differences to using this to using the data file. The first is you can't use the arrow keys to create a new line, instead you press execute. In addition, unlike on the data file, you can add new lines in. This is a very handy feature. Each notepad only has the one page. It's not like the data file where it has multiple files attached. And once we save it, 
what you'll see is pressing mode allows us to create a new one. So we can have more than one notepad. Notepad also has a couple of brand new tricks up its sleeve. Let's create a new one. We're gonna call it receipt. And now we can pop some entries in. I know that seems really cheap, but this was 1989. So once we have a couple of entries put in on our receipt, instead of adding them up ourselves, we can simply write sum, followed by the equals, and then hit mode and go to calculate. Boom, there it is, just adds them up for you. That's not the only trick it can do. It can also calculate mean, and of course the mean doesn't include our sum, it simply includes the first three options. Going to home takes you to the beginning of the notepad. Going to end takes you to the bottom of the notepad. Also, like on the main menu, if you press mode and then simply press the H, it'll jump to home and take you to the top. There's a couple more options. We've got a find, so it'll search through your notepad. We've got a sort, which will sort things alphabetically. We've also got a number which adds a number down the side. This could be handy for creating lists. We've got password which allows you to password protect a specific notepad. So this isn't for all of them, it's just for this one notepad. Finally we've got a print option and then we've got a directory. Copy, delete and zap which erases everything. The directory button lists all the notes that are currently on the disk. We've not saved the one we currently got open, so it's not showing up, but you can see the other two. Going out and back into notes will open the last note you were working on, and it'll put you in the same place you left it. If you want to open a different one, simply go to load, and then hit and execute will list them, as opposed to you writing in the name. Select the one you want, press execute, and it will open it. So Notes offers new capabilities not available in the current file system. You can have much longer notes, alphabetize them, add numbers down the side, and even perform calculations within the note itself. I think you'll agree that this is definitely a step in the direction of the creation of a word processor. After notes, we've got world. This is a world clock. So in here, you can set a destination like so. This sets your main clock to that region. So if we go back out of here and go into time, there we are. We're now in Nice rather than London, and it's adjusted the time accordingly. Going back into here, we can find a different place by typing in a couple of letters and then scroll up and down through the file system to find the one you want. Pressing execute sets that as your world time, and when you come back in, it'll remain the same. Next up, we've got alarm. We've got eight separate alarms that we can set. Simply select free slot, press execute. You then use the arrows to select the day and the time. Then you can choose whether you want it once, hourly, daily, workdays, weekly, and back to once. Once you hit execute, it will set it and you can choose which output you want. You can have the normal, siren and chimes. All of them are quite squeaky thanks to the piezoelectric speaker. After alarm, we've got month. This adds a month view. You can use the arrow keys to scroll to any date you want or any month you want and then pressing execute will take you there in the diary. There's no entries for that day. There's a couple of options in here. We've got find, go to, tidy, print, save, restore, X restore, and setup. Next up, we've got program. So this allows you to write programs natively on the device, which you can then translate and run. If you are interested in programming on any of the Scion machines, as they all use OPL, then don't forget to check out my OPL coding tutorials. I'll pop a link here. This allows you to expand the capabilities of your handheld directly without the use of a PC, which helps make this handheld one of the most powerful on the market at the time. After that, we've got X-Files. No, not those X files. Although I guess you could record it on here. These are actually for the database files that we're using. At the moment, we just have one. It'll be named main and it'll be on the A drive. Got two entries, which we put in right at the beginning. One of the beauties of the LZ is that you can now easily create another file. So now when we go to directory, 
you'll see that there are two different options. Selecting it then means that find and save on the main screen or find and save on this screen will allow you to find files and save new file. One of the advantages of this screen is that if you're entering a few different files, each time you save it, it starts a new one. Unlike on the main screen, where each time you'll have to go back to save. Now, if we go to directory, it should tell us that we've got three entries. You can choose to open a different file by going to open, hitting execute will show you them and then select them with the arrows and press execute again to open a different file. You can also print a file and we now have a sort function. This alphabetizes all the files. Copy allows you to copy the file to one of the data pack. Delete allows you to erase a file and that's all the options here. After that, we've got utilities. So this allows you to search the entire of data. So it'll look through the agenda and any files and any notepads all for the same thing like so. So this is very powerful and obviously allows you to look through all the files at once. We've also got info, which allows you to check how much memory you have left. Sound gives you the option to turn it on or off. Directory allows you to list all the files or just files or just notes or OPL files or comms files or plan or pager files. Although I don't know what these would be. It allows you to list the old style diary. So again, this is very useful to work out what's taking up all your precious RAM. Next, we've got copy, allowing you to move files to the data packs. Delete, which deletes files. Password, which allows you to set a device password. This is a new addition to the LZ and very useful. You can change the language. You can reset the device which will erase everything in the RAM and you can select format which is for formatting RAM packs. It won't format flash packs and it won't format standard data packs. Standard data packs need to be UV erased. And finally we've got off which does what you might expect. So the LZ adds a whole host of new features that you might consider to be missing from the XP, including the battery meter, built-in password protection, and a simple stopwatch and countdown timer. It also makes it much easier to manage multiple databases. This can be done on the XP via OPL or by using multiple memory cards. But the LZ makes this simply effortless. The addition of notes with its built-in calculations and the new diary features show very much the direction Scion is moving at this time. It won't be long before they put all those refinements in a clamshell design and create the Series 3, which will dominate the handheld market for over a decade. It's a shame we don't see innovation like that on devices these days. If you've enjoyed this video, as always, a like and a sub would be amazing. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next video. As always, my name's Hugh. This is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.